Welcome back to Spoilers of War. Spoilers ahead, folks. Well, this time out for the Dragon Tamers is a lot less fun in How to Train Your Dragon 3, The Hidden World, which honestly just turns out to be a cave under a sinkhole in the ocean. But I digress. This movie is filled with beautiful colors and wonderful cinematography, but not much else in my opinion. It tries to tell a story of our favorite dragon riders finding the ancestral home of the dragons, as in the place where they all came from. But really, it teaches a hard life lesson that is not finished till the very end. We find ourselves looking at the entire series and seeing this is a trilogy centered on coping with loss. When you think about it, in this light, you may even find it a bit depressing. But DreamWorks will not stop until Hiccup, the protagonist of this series, loses nearly everything he holds dear. From losing his leg and mobility, to losing his mother, and just when he finds his mother again, and you think he is going to finally catch a break, then boom, his dad dies. Then he loses his freedom by being made chief of the whole tribe and getting married to Astrid. To the finale of the movie, where we find our hero giving up his dragons and ultimately losing his best friend Toothless. Now, this was going to be a short video, so I threw in a little bit of light philosophy on life. However, here is the movie in a nutshell. Hiccup and the gang are having a great time going around and freeing or stealing dragons from their Viking captors and bringing them back to their island, Burke. But soon they realize there are too many dragons on this little island and that the hunters will come looking for the dragons there. Then, conveniently, they all remember that there's an old sailor's tale of a hidden place in the ocean where all the dragons are said to have come from. So they decide they will try to take the dragons back to this hidden place, their homeland. Now, a very skilled dragon hunter somehow sneaks into their camp and tells Hiccup that he has killed every other Night Fury in the world except for the one living there in Burke, i.e. Toothless, his best friend. Now the team runs the villain off this time, but he vows that he will return to kill the Night Fury. So, rather than trying to fight him off from their home, which is a defendable position, they instead decide to run into the ocean in search of the hidden dragon world where they are all supposedly going to be safe. However, the dragon hunter has a pet white light fury. He releases it and tries to draw Toothless, Hiccup's dragon, away. But, if you remember, Toothless can't fly without Hiccup on his back to control his lost tail rudder. So, in a decision that ends up being the best wingman move ever, but the worst friendship-killing mistake of Hiccup's life, he makes a tail wing for his dragon that will allow him to fly on his own, and tells him to go after the white girl dragon. The dragon trainers find a new island on their way to the hidden dragon cave and set up camp there. While out scouting ahead, Hiccup and Astrid find the hidden cave full of dragons, and beautiful luminescence and plenty of natural black light, and realize the dragons all have sweet designs all over their body that can only be seen under those black lights. After that, they go back to tell the others of the cave. Then, Toothless the Night Fury gets captured. So the team of teenagers goes and saves the day, and in the end, everyone decides to release all the dragons to the hidden cave and live alone without having dragons ever again. Now, cut to the end, where... Hiccup is the chief of the tribe and married to Astrid and has two kids. Meanwhile, Toothless the Night Fury and the female Light Fury are together with three babies of their own. Now, for my closing thoughts. This movie hits a little too close to home for me. Like in real life, growing up hurts. You maybe help your friends find their wife or maybe sit helplessly by and see them run off with the love of their life. And you know that you've lost them. Things will never be the same. Sadly, they have cast you by the wayside. It happens, and it still makes me wonder why it has to be that way. Even to this day, I wonder. Now, secondly, this movie is a clear cash grab. There was barely any effort put into the storyline. For goodness sakes, the main bad guy's lifelong ambition was only to be known by a handful of people as that guy that killed a certain type of dragon. And, like, if he can just drive that one breed to extinction, then he will be able to die a happy man. 
The point of the movie was to introduce new colorful dragon toys and a new bad guy character, and that's it. Something for your kids to buy. It's the toys. The whole point is to sell kids more toys. And they did it with this sad shell of a movie. Honestly, what's next in the series? I mean, how to train your children? Because these dragons aren't coming back. Now, my third thought. Don't be happy for or encourage your friends serious relationships that will leave and likely never be seen again. Then you will just be sad like Hiccup at the end of this movie. And my last thought is the Vikings. Why aren't they living up to their Viking standards? These are the worst Vikings ever. They don't conquer or pillage. They don't fight or plunder. They're all about peace and love, like they were invaded by hippies or liberals. They need a Ragnar or a Beowulf in their mix. Now that's a movie I want to watch. But thanks for watching. That's all for now.